Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to be able to see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to move this thing too. Okay. Um, oh, I'm going to do this. But uh, Ray is going to help me with the slides because I, I'm not going to be able to um, turn them myself. I am um, Dottie Lemieux. I have a company called Green Dog Campaigns, and both Lee Stampley and Richard Foldenauer, who you met going around the room, work uh, with me in Green Dog Campaigns. And I've been doing campaigns for a number of years uh, to put together this little slideshow called Campaigning 101, and we're going to sort of rush through what, would, what a campaign would look like. Before that, I... <laughs> I want to let you know on that table over there, I have some handouts if you would like to look at them. There are different articles that I've written and have been published in various campaign magazines over the years. One is called It's in the Mail, uh, What You Need to Know to Do Some to Good Direct Mail. One is 10 Common Mistakes That Novice Candidates Make. It's got sort of how not to make them. One is absentee voting and um, never stop campaigning because even up to the last minute people are voting. And the fourth is dialing for dollars. I know Judy's going to talk to us about fundraising, but I have a, just a little few tips for picking up the phone and making those calls. I also have a book campaign boot camp by Christine Pelosi, who's the daughter of Nancy Pelosi. And I'm one of the contributors to this book. I, I find there's a lot of good tips in here, and it's for sale over there on that table for $21.65. So with that, we'll go right to the show. Um, OK, this is what we do as Green Dogs. We're a full-service campaign consulting organization. We do strategy, messaging and image, direct mail, electronic media, web ads, video production and placement, uh, aggressive field and get out the vote campaigns, and we do opposition research and polling. Next, campaign, Campaigning 101, nuts and bolts of a grassroots campaign. From sewer board to Congress, we've run them all. So a lot of these things will be good for some big, big campaigns, some will be good for smaller campaigns. Why are you running? The first thing you have to ask yourself as a candidate is, why am I running? Um, before that even, what office do you want to run for? You, you, most people want to run for an office because they want to give something back to the community. They've been involved in public service and they want to go to the next level. There may be a burning issue, something that's going on in your community that you really think you're the best to address. You want to make sure it's the right race for you. If you're involved in school issues, maybe you want to run for a school board. Maybe there are um, issues around uh, land use. You'd want to run for maybe county supervisor or city council. So make sure that you pick the right race. And is it the right time for you to run? Are you running against an incumbent? Is it going to be a hard race? Is this the right time for your family? Can you afford it? Are you just know everything about the race that you're running for before you jump in. Know what your budget needs for the race, how much is it going to cost. Look at past elections that are similar to yours and see what people have had to spend to run in that election. And know who your competition is going to be. Are you running against an incumbent? Are, are you running against some well-known people? Maybe you're not so well-known. Or is it going to be really easy for you? All of these things will go into making that first critical decision if this is the race for you. Okay, getting started. You want to define the issues. What are the issues in this campaign? They're different in all campaigns. There are some that overlap because there are always issues of good government, good governance. Sometimes the issue is the incumbent is not doing a good job and somebody else could be more responsive to the community and that somebody is you. Or it could be some particular issue that you think that you have the best expertise and can deal with. You want to set your budget. Um, early on, you want to put together your, your campaign budget and know how much it's going to cost to do each step of the campaign, from that filing fee to doing mail. Are you going to need to do TV? Are you need to uh, ha do handouts that you're going to walk door to door with? How sophisticated are you going to want to be? And what are you going to have to raise? Because you're going to have to get out there and raise money. And then you're going to want to put your campaign team into place, people that are going to help you on your campaign. Do you need a consultant? 
I'm a campaign consultant, so this is one of the questions I always uh, put out there for people that are considering it. Uh, it's going to uh, depend from race to race. Sometimes smaller races, you don't really need a consultant. You can do it with volunteers. You can do it on your own. Um, I've worked on, as I said, sewer boards, and I've worked on congressional races and everything in between. So it depends on how, how tough the competition is, um, how tough your um, opponents are going to be, how much you're going to have to spend. Are you running against an incumbent, which always makes it more difficult. Uh, having a consultant sometimes helps you frame, just frame the issues, frame your message so that it gets to the voters and they understand why they should vote for you instead of the incumbent. You have to kind of tell them what he's doing wrong and what you're going to do right. And again, what is your budget? Because a consultant's going to add to that budget. Now, who else do you need on your team? You need some people to help you day to day. You'll need a campaign manager who is different from a consultant because a manager is somebody like Avis here who's going to go with the candidate places, who's going to keep track of things, um, who's going to keep, uh, keep track of where you have to be. And sometimes you'll have a separate scheduler if it's a really big campaign to do that because your calendar is going to get full and you don't want to be double booked. A campaign manager is going to field those phone calls from the press. They're going to help you um, just be ready to, pre to be prepared for debates and all those kind of things that you're going to see along the campaign trail. You want someone to keep your database for you. In a smaller race, this could be the same. You could, these could all be done by one person in a really small race, but it's usually two or three. And they can be volunteers, and in larger races, you'll often pay some people to do this. The database person is going to make sure that you have a good Excel spreadsheet or access database, some kind of database where everybody who gives you money or you meet, you get a card from, you're going to want to put them in that database and say what they've done, um, how you know them. Have they contributed money? Have they offered to be a volunteer? Or how do you think that you might interact with them in the future? You'll need a volunteer coordinator to take that database and call those people and ask them if they're willing to walk precincts for you, to lick envelopes for you, to make phone calls for you, all the various things that you're going to need an army of volunteers to help with. And a field leader is somebody that's going to take those volunteers and make sure that they come to the phone bank and they're making their calls to the voters and that they come to the precinct walks and that they're out there walking precincts. And the, the field, also called field coordinator, will be putting together packages for um, walk sheets for people to take out to the precincts, to the voters. Um, so as you need, these are sort of the basic people that you're going to need to help you, and they, some of these jobs can be, be done by the same person. Okay, um, one back. Uh, the team continued. The general consultant we talked about, you might need a direct mail consultant, somebody that's job is going to be putting together mail. This is... In mostly bigger campaigns, you're going to have somebody dedicated to that purpose. Maybe you'll have somebody that's doing media, um, doing your radio and TV ads, your web ads. You want somebody that can be a good designer that will work on your website and um, other handouts that you're going to have, anything that's going to need design, and so somebody that's going to be a social media maven. In this day and age, you have to do social media. I, I don't think that's how you win elections, but I think that's how you add to your electioneering. Uh, you want to be on Facebook, you want to be on Twitter, you want to have somebody that's going to be keeping that up for you if you don't have time to do it yourself. Do you need a poll? In a large race where it's highly competitive, where there are a lot of people running, where there are big issues, a poll is a good idea because you want to get kind of the lay of the land. You want to see what name recognition you have and the other candidates have. You want to see what issues are resonating with the voters. You want to see what kind of uh, message is going to resonate with the voters. You may think that um, one thing is the issue and you find out that the voters only care about something else and you're going to have to really think about how you're going to talk to those people. So you need to look at your opposition, the message, again, the budget. Polls are not cheap, but there are a lot of different ways to do them, from using the web to phone calls 
uh, to a combination of um, ways to do it. But if to do a really good scientific poll, you want to get some a, sci um, a polling professional. You want to look at who else is polling and what are their polls showing. Because if someone else is, is getting the information, sometimes you can use what they find out. They're not going to give you all of their information, but sometimes you can find out a little bit about what what's going on by looking at the results of other people's polls. And sometimes there's polls that are done by newspapers or by um, cities if there's issues that are coming up. So you want to look at all of those. So in, to decide whether you want to poll, you want to know what do you need to know about this election, and then look at all of these other things and see if a poll is something that will help you. You need to figure out how many votes do you need to win. And you kind of have to look at how many people are running, how many frequent voters are there in your race. You don't want to look at every single voter. But you want to look at the people that frequently vote in your race. So you're going to go to a um, vendor who sells lists, somebody that takes the list from the counties and, and massages that information out of them so that you get just the, the voters that you need to reach in order to get that critical mass, which is 50% plus one if it's a two-person race. And if it's a larger race, um, you, may, you may win with 27 percent, as has happened in some of the assembly and congressional races, because there have been eight, nine, ten people. And in this congressional race with 12 people, with a two-person um, top two primary, the top two, there could be somebody that gets 50 percent, and then somebody else that gets 20 percent, and those two could be running off in the fall, because everybody else might be under that. So it's just kind of a different time now, but it's an interesting um, kind of have to do that computation. So you might want to um, think about giving different messages to different groups that you are going to be reaching out to, um, and we'll talk, talk about that in a minute. You want to create a campaign plan. You want to set your goals with a timeline. What do you need to have done by when? How much money do you have to have raised by when? When are there reporting periods to the FPPC or the FEC? Uh, when, do you, when do the absentee voters start voting? You want to make sure you get something to those absentees. It's very important. You want to know what your message is going to be. So this is where you're going to put some of your team together and, and sit down and work on your message. Um, you want to keep your message uh, short. You want to have uh, a theme, but something that's not too, you don't have too many issues. You want to try to hone it down to two or three main issues that you want to get out to the voters. Who is your audience? You want to know who your voters are. That goes back to targeting. You want to know the numbers of votes needed. And then you want to know how much it's going to cost for each of these elements. How much are you going to need to walk door to door? How much are you going to need for mail? How much for media? Um, for your consultants, for all of those things. I keep bringing, it, bringing this up because the number one problem that candidates have is raising money and understanding how expensive it is to run even a simple campaign, especially where there are several contestants in one race. So this is something they call a message box, and it's kind of a really useful um, exercise to do when you're running. At the top right, or your left, I guess it says, what do you say about you? You want to sit down with your team and say what all the nice things about you that you can think of, why you're good for this election. You're smart. You know the issues. You've been in the community a long time. You're a leader. And then you want to, um, what? Then you want to go down to the next one and say, what do you say about them? Oh, the other side, well, they're terrible, they're stupid, they don't know anything, they're right-wing wackos, you know, anything you, that you, that's negative about them. Then you want to say, um, what do they say about themselves? Well, they think they're great. They think they, they understand the issues. They, they're, um, they've been elected before. They have a good grasp of what the population wants. And then what do they say about you? So you want to know what the other side is thinking about you, because that's what they're going to be on the campaign trail saying. So it's really it's a good exercise to kind of get your head around the whole um, psychology of the campaign. Creating your message, the K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, stupid. You want to have a simple message. 
No more than three to five bullet points for your campaign materials, whether they're handouts or mail. Um, some things you can do longer on a website. You can put your white papers and, and have a, a longer message, but you want to still keep it pretty simple. You want to have your main issues. You want to give them your main accomplishments. If you've been in office or if you've been in public service, you really want to let people know that you've done something, even if it's different from the office you're running for, so that it'll translate into being a good elected official. And who are your key endorsers? Make sure you get out there and ask people for their endorsements. And if you get some good ones like the Sierra Club or the Chamber of Commerce, some elected officials, people that people will recognize in the community, list them on, the, on your campaign material. But how are you going to get your message out? One way is direct mail. Uh, can be very expensive, but it's pretty important in most races. You want to use the web. You want to uh, be walking door to door in a lot of races, especially the smaller ones. It's really important because people, people to people is the best is obviously the best way to reach people. You want to be phoning people um, and having your volunteers phone people and giving them your message. You want to be going to events like this where you network and meet with people, and you want to hold your own events, um, house parties, kickoff, that kind of thing. You might want to use TV and radio in a larger race. You might want to do robocalls, those annoying f phone calls uh, on the, at dinner time that you get. They actually work. And you might want to use signs and swag, which are buttons and bumper stickers and things. Those aren't really the best way to deliver your message, but they can be useful if you've got all the other stuff covered as a reinforcement. Greg Brockbank here. This was, I think, an effective use of a sign. Um, Greg had done some good mail. I worked, did his campaign when he ran for city council. And we used the sign to deliver a message that said that the Sierra Club and the firefighters both endorsed Greg. And I think that was a, a good use, very simple, but it reinforced the fact that he had a broad base of support among organizations that people care about. Types of mailing. Um, there are different types of mail that you might do. One, if you have a lot of money, you can do one of each. Most people kind of cram them together. Introduction to the candidate, who are you, especially if no one's ever heard of you. You might want to give a little story about yourself. What are your issues? Have some testimonials. Judy Arnold, write you a nice letter saying, or a little, a little paragraph saying, so-and-so is just the greatest person I ever met. I couldn't imagine a better person in office. That'll, that, that looks good. Um, you might want to use a comparison or a negative piece if you're running against the incumbent or somebody that you really want to say something about because it's important that that information get out. And something to the absentees that might be specially t focused to them that people are going to start voting early. This was an absentee piece that we did for Shirley Zane as a supervisor up in Sonoma County. Uh, we really just called attention to the absentee ballot. You're going to be voting. Your ballot's here. Look at it. Just vote for Shirley. It was pretty simple. We, we also did a testimonial piece for Shirley. This one has firefighters on it, police, um, a nurse, uh, uh, who else is it on there? A, a bunch of different people from the community and just somebody at the door, like a nice family. And we have some quotes from all of those people, seniors that vote for Shirley. And we have her endorsements. You can see the logos of the Sierra Club and the environmental group, the unions. Just it's, it's fairly simple, but it gets the message across that she's got a broad base of support. This was a comparison piece I did for a sewer board candidate. And it's pretty simple. Actually, this wasn't the sewer board. This was a supervisor in Lake County, but I did a similar one for a sewer board. But it was uh, trying to show the difference between the two. It was really simple. We, we said what each person had, um, what their position was and what they'd done in various areas. And the issue and issues, there were two issues. One was that Lake County had been falling into disrepair and there was a lot of drug use and problems. And the current supervisor wasn't doing anything about it. The other one issue that came up during the campaign that we put on here was that he had been actually using his office to campaign out of, which is a big no-no, it's illegal. And we wanted to highlight that. So we did, and she won. Finding your volunteers. Where do you find all these volunteers that you're going to need? Well, you want to go to your friends and your family. 
your colleagues, people you work with, people you know, and various um, organizations you belong to, interest groups who care about the issues, like the Sierra Club, if it's an environmental issue, Chamber of Commerce, it's a, if it's a business issue. Uh, people who've worked on other campaigns. A lot of people really like campaigning, and they really get off on it. So find those people and see if they want to help you. So be creative. There are people all around you that are, you're going to be able to pull out and get them to help you. Now, we talked about targeting before. These are some types of targeting that you might want to do when you're doing your mail um, or your phone calls or anything. If you have a, a good enough budget that you can break up some of your, your mail to go to different targets, women, if you're a woman running for an office, sometimes this is a really good time to reach out to women, especially if there aren't very many in the office that you're running for. Geographically, if you're running in a district that's got maybe um, some rural areas, some city areas, some different communities, you might want to send a little different message to each one. You might want to send to different the parties, the Democrats or the Republicans, to slightly different message. Um, and age groups are also important to think about. So here's a couple of examples. This was, one, again, Shirley Zane, something we sent to seniors. It had a little nostalgic picture on the front of kids throwing leaves up in the air, and it says, remember when, when you could play in the street and neighbors watched out for each other, that kind of thing. And then we have a, a couple, a senior couple, and we have Shirley Zane walking on a senior's march. So we really reached out to the seniors. It um, was a good move in that race. And there's a lot of people 50 and over and 60 and over and that vote, so it's a, it's a good demographic. This was something we did for Susan Adams in her last election, uh, supervisorial election. It was a Democratic Party endorsement, and we just happenstance grabbed all these people at the convention who are all with the Marin Democratic Party, and I'm in there, you'll see Richard's in there, and Senator Leno's in there, and we got them against a the wall and took their picture and put it on a card and sent it out. <laughs> so um, you might want to, if you have enough money and you've got a big race, you might want to do some cable or radio spots. Um, cable is, is a cost-effective way to get your message on TV. It's much less expensive than broadcast TV. You can target it pretty closely, and you can um, reach the audience that you want. Again, your, your budget is going to be important and what your campaign is like. Radio also is very inexpensive. Short radio spots can be effective. You want to have short, pithy messages and use humor. Always use humor as much as you can. We try to do that in our campaigns because it's, it really helps reach people. New media websites are crucial. I think you have to have a good website now, and Lise is going to talk to you about that some more. You want to use Facebook and Twitter, and sometimes we use web ads, which can be done um, on, the, on the pages of the various newspapers, like the Pacific Sun or the Marin IJ, and it'll click through to your um, website. So all of these, these things are effective. This is just a, a little snapshot from Diana Conti's website and after she won, which just says, we won, thank you for your support. And it's just kind of what you can do with a website. You can change it quickly. Um, dealing with the press. You're going to get called by the press or you're going to be places and someone's going to stick a microphone in your face. You want to be able to know how to talk to them. So you really want to know what the biases are of the various newspapers and outlets and blogs in your area. If you can find a friendly reporter, that's a, a good person to make friends with so that you, if you have something to say, maybe you go to them. Always return their calls. You'll be tempted to avoid them sometimes, but it's always good to you know, take a deep breath. You don't have to talk to them that second, but call them back and you don't have to answer their direct questions, but say something to them so that the story isn't that you were ducking the press. And nothing that you say is off the record. So don't just say, just between us, because uh, it's not going to be. <clears throat> Make your own press. Send out press releases. Have uh, press conferences if you've got something really exciting to say. Uh, send out releases about parties that you're going to have and stuff. Uh, don't waste the press's time by having a press conference every time you, you, know, you walk down the street. But there are times when you can really use the press effectively. 
Um, this is just a couple of things at the end here. Judy's going to talk about fundraising, but I had this, she might even have this, but this kind of fun graphic that's, that goes back to getting who you're, going to, who you're going to find to help you out, who you're going to, these same people that you're going to go to for your volunteers are going to give you money, some of them, your friends and family at the beginning of the, actually you should be at the beginning because you should put some money into your race, then your friends and family, then your colleagues, then the interest groups, and then around the outside of the circle, these are the people with, say, ax to grind. They have some reason they don't like the other person that you're running against. And because they don't like that person, they may be willing to give you some money. And then this is just a quick sample timeline. It's good to make a timeline of you know where you are, starting with election day. This was for a November election day. Election day and get out the vote. Um, call your voters that you've identified from walking and phoning. Um, then if you're doing, going to do a robocall, you're going to do it that last weekend. F you're going to have phone banks. Your last mail, when, when that's going to go out. You have to plan all this stuff in advance because you're going to need the money to do it. If you're going to do mail, you have to go to the printer, pay the printer. You have to be ready to pay the post office. And in and right now, the post office is falling apart, so you can't count on mail getting there in time. You have to get that mail out early. So this is probably late to be getting out your last mail for a race this year. So all of these things are kind of from the, the last day down to the first. And, and so I, there's a whole lot of other stuff. And if anybody um, has any questions, I would take them. And if anybody would like a copy of this, I could get it for you. So I, I know it's a lot to try to assimilate. Oh, no questions? Oh, one. Could you uh, elaborate a little bit on what's going on with the post office and how much lead time you really need to give? Well, it's really hard to say. They're closing the North Bay Service Center in Petaluma May 15th. And that is where all the mail has been going to get delivered uh, at the bulk, the bulk service center. So. They're supposed to deliver elected, election mail in three days because it's supposed to be treated like first class mail. In the last cycle, they didn't do that. The last cycle it took at least a week for mail to get delivered, and it's going to because they've been cutting back and cutting back. This time, it's going to be even worse. So, uh, we're telling people give 10 days at least lead time, and right close to the election, it's when that because it's going to go to Oakland now. And when it goes to Oakland, we've had experiences of just the, everything getting lost, the bags flying open, and the mail just disappearing. So it's, <laughs> I mean, hopefully that won't happen to you in your election, <laughs> but it has happened. Um, Lise here has had to go to the post office and say Hail Marys <laughs> with, the, <laughs> with the postmistress to try to, to get somebody to help find the mail. So. <laughs> So yeah, it's uh, it's anybody's guess. Do you have a question, Joe? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks.